Hi, let's do some practice. In this video, we'll cover question 25, 26, 29, 27, 31, and that's all. So pause the video now and try it yourself first. 2,000 years later. Question 25. So in this question, it's asking you satellite 1 and satellite 2 will have these orbit possible. So when you try to understand the orbit, you have to understand this is a circular motion. And for satellites, they don't give extra energy to perform. I mean, if you have a careful control, if you have an engine, of course, whatever orbit, whatever trajectory, you can, you can do it wherever you like. But then when we are talking about orbiting, uh, it should not involve energy change because you are staying in the same orbit all the time and it's only made by the gravitational force. So for satellite 2, it's possible because if you try to imagine uh, this is the Earth and this is the circle that's orbiting around, uh, the gravitational force is always constant and po pointing towards the center of the Earth. However, for satellite 1, it is not because uh, thinking about, for example, the satellite is at this point versus at this point, the force is not even in the same direction and it is not towards the center of the circle and therefore it is not possible. Question 26. It is asking you why the astronaut will feel weightless at the height of 300 km above the Earth's surface. So the explanation is simply think of this is the Earth and uh, actually whatever orbit they are performing, uh, the spaceship at and the astronaut, they both have the same gravitational acceleration. Okay, be careful, I'm not saying gravitational force, but the uh, 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 gravitational acceleration, because you have to divide it by m on both sides. And since they are having the same a, and therefore there's no reaction force involved, because they both making the circular motion with the same v squared over r. And since you cannot have any reaction force from the ground or whatsoever from the surface of the spaceship, uh, then technically the person and the spaceship are not even touching. Or at least there's no force involved between them. And therefore you don't feel uh, you have weight. The reason why right now when you're sitting in front of this computer and you feel yourself is being attracted by the earth, in fact, it's because your chair or your ground giving you the normal reaction, which is equal in magnitude of your weight. Imagine if someone tried to jump, uh, in this case, you don't have reaction force. Or if someone tried to skydiving uh, or without any parachute or simply jump from, I don't know, from, from somewhere which is really tall, uh, you also feel weightless, but it doesn't mean you do not experience weight which means the gravitational force. You still, no matter where you are on Earth, uh, no matter you're in the air or what, you still have the weight, which is pointing towards the center of the Earth. You just don't have the normal reaction force. Question 29, uh, there are two orbits, A and B, and it's asking you which one has a greater Ke, Pe, and total energy. So the first thing that you probably would want to do systematically is to write down the equation of them. So give me a second. All right, so here we've got three equations and from the diagram or the situation itself, you should also notice our A is going to be greater than our B because of the distance from the Earth or the orbit itself. So let's go through each energy uh, together. So for the kinetic energy, for the one who has a greater kinetic energy, then you must have if this whole thing is greater, then R has to be smaller, right? And therefore, B will be the one having a greater Ke. Okay, because uh, I think the other things are identical. Yeah, here, identical. So the small m is all the same. And then for potential energy, notice that this is negative. So that means since uh, the greatest potential energy is zero, so that means if you are, you are not, if you are not that negative, then you are a win. You are a winner already. So you want to get this number to be smaller. Okay, I uh, deliberately exclude the negative. 
Okay, so just the magnet to itself become less. That means R has to be greater. So in this case, A will have a greater potential energy. And in fact, simply, the further away from the planet, then you have greater potential energy, of course. And lastly, talking about the total uh, energy, uh, the idea is similar to potential energy because they are both negative. And so in this case, it will also be A. So A will have a greater total energy as well. Question 27. So it said there is a rocket launching from the surface of the planet. And now the rocket is two out from the planet. Um, here I feel it's better if they specify planet center or surface. If they don't say surface, then I assume it will be center then. Okay, then that means uh, this is going to be 2R. Well, 1R obviously is the radius of the planet. So I guess the diagram kind of uh, in scale. At this point, velocity will be this one and there's no more field. So um, it's a ballistic motion basically. For part A, explain why it will eventually crash on the surface of the planet. So if it can crash, that means it cannot escape. So this is some idea that you should have. That means for the total energy, it's going to be smaller than zero. So this is something that you want to find out and show to the marker, obviously, to, the, or to your audience, obviously. And so what we want to find is to evaluate the total energy. Uh, it doesn't really matter which point, cause it should conserve. So we can just do kinetic energy, and potential energy at obviously the point where we now have the rocket. So we can substitute kinetic energy with the fundamental equation half mv square and potential will be negative g big m small m over r and r here is 2r. Next is to substitute the v with the one that they provide to us. So uh, square and square root will cancel out. We have big g big m over 2r minus big G, big M, small m over L with 1 over 2. So that means it's 1 over 4 minus 1 over 2. That means it's negative 1 over 4 with the other part. And obviously, since it's negative, then it must be less than 0. And then you can say, because total energy is smaller than 0, therefore it will be attracted back to the surface and crash on the surface. Part B is asking you the furthest distance, maximum distance you can travel from the center of the planet. So this is like the usual question you have in normal mechanics. For example, if you flow an object, uh, the highest point you can reach is when the object is of zero velocity. So here, uh, you can also think about there's a point where Ke equals to zero, and that's the turning point. Uh, or the maximum distance you can reach. So uh, because we have the total energy already, then we can get use, get make use of that. So that means the total energy will be the one that we get. And guess what? That would simply be the gravitational potential energy. So negative gmm over r. This r I will use a small r, lowercase r, to indicate it's a variable. And so uh, we just have to find out this small r. So this, this small r is going to be, well, four big r of the planet. So that's the maximum distance you will travel to. Now, part C, it asks you the speed when the rocket crashed onto the surface, what speed it will have. So once again, you'll be using the total energy. So now I hope you can find total energy is quite useful because you can always call that and then you try to pick any point you like and try to work out the potential energy and kinetic energy. So yeah, I'll, I'll just call it. So I'll write the, uh, I'll write this again, and then that should include kinetic energy and potential energy. Remember when you're on the surface of the planet, you still have gravitational potential energy. In this case, uh, we are not setting the zero at the surface. We're setting zero at the infinity. And so here we've got the expression negative 104 gmm over r. And for kinetic energy, we'll keep it as half mv squared. And for potential energy, when you're at 1 out from the surface, that is gmm over 1 big out. So that means we have 
the GMM over our, this is positive one, minus one over four, so that means three over four in total. And we have negative, I mean one over two MV squared. Let's cancel something out. We can cancel out the small m, and then uh, two and four. And so that means V equals to, well, can we find out anything? Can we calculate, do we have actual number? Okay, we don't because they only mention it's a planet. We can't even assume it's Earth and plug in the number. So I guess we can only uh, find out the expression, but not an actual number. So we can just say 3GM over L square root to be the final expression. Oops, I've missed the two. Okay, here we go. Part D is the most challenging part because it asks you to draw a graph or sketch a graph uh, in terms of the V against the L. So you have to find the expression of V equals to something related to the L from the center of the planet. So uh, again, we have to think through the energy. So I would still use this, but then we have to find a general idea. So I will still have one over four negative GMM over L, while half mv squared i mean just similar to part c like right here but then what we have to do is the position right now is arbitrary so what we have to do is to keep this instead of the big l we'll keep this as a general variable out small out here and then uh, we can separate the v and the r so we have this untouched and then this move to the other side and then we kind of extract GMM out negative 1 over 4 L plus 1 over small L and then we have times 2 we have the small m okay cancel out okay let's just erase it erase the small m and then uh, leaving us with the V only, and then we have the square root the other side. So uh, you just have to plot this. And since you have graphical calculator or you can find the software online, I'll leave this to you. You just have to substitute the equation and you can find out the shape. Question 31, uh, it said there's a satellite orbiting around the earth and now it turned on the engine and well, obviously there's a work done probably and changing its orbit with a larger radius. State whether or not work done is positive, zero or negative. So obviously, again, you have to consider the total energy because you should not consider just the KD or just the potential energy. You should consider the total. So let's just write the equation again. Total is negative GMM over 2R. And so in this case, since it's a larger radius, that means R increase, and therefore the whole number becomes smaller. But then if you look at this whole thing, it means become less negative. L less negative means you have more energy in general. For example, it was negative 200, now it becomes negative 100. So less negative, and you have to add 100 to it. So obviously the answer will be positive the work done by the engine that's all for this video if you have any question feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below i'll see you again in the next video bye